log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, master. Position, six degrees, eight minutes north, 122 degrees, 15 minutes east. Wind brisk, sky fair. Remarks, departed Sulu Islands at dawn after violent exit from Royal Palace. Reason for violence, the lonely Sultan of Isabella de Basalan. of Basalan is the northernmost of the Sulu group, which forms the palm-studded division line between the Sulu Sea to the east and the Celebes Sea to the west. Its chief city, Isabella de Basalan, a collection of bamboo and nipa palm houses grouped around a Mohammedan temple and a few shops and offices, was a crucial port on the voyage of the Scarlet Queen. There we were to contact an aged and trusted friend of Kuji Kang's, the sultan of the island, Kamalul Hakayam II. From his hands, we would have received what had grown to be the most important document in the world. The final instructions. The chart showing the actual location of $10 million worth of priceless relics that traced the eight historic periods of China's past and China's beginning. So it was with feelings mixed between elation and something like dread that we made our moorings in the lazy harbor of Isabella and were boarded by the turbaned little port official. Which is Captain Tuan. That's me. I will look at papers written for the ship, Tuan. Yeah, here they are, all ready for you. Mm. You have no purpose here, Tuan. Yeah, I got a good purpose here. I have business with Kamalul Hakayam II. Knowing, Tuan, that shadows come and shadows go, this island will be a place of desolation for you. His shadow is no longer with us. Get to the point. You mean he's dead? For five days, Twans. His son is even now at home in the great chambers of the palace of Marmanuk as Kamalul Hakayam III, Sultan of Basilan. You will, hearing this, still have business here? I hope so. Believe me, I hope so. And so Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tolman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week, a complete entry in the log, and every week, a league further in the strange voyage of the Scarlet Queen. Ten minutes after we were moored, I left the ship in Gallagher's command and headed toward the palace. Realizing if there was anyone with whom the old sultan had trusted the secret, his son or anyone else, I'd have to make my arrival known before I could hope to be contacted. When I reached the palace of Mamanuk, I followed a heavy set, brightly uniformed guard down a long inner hallway, rich with marble, mysterious with tightly closed doors on either side. Uneasy with a complete lack of visible humanity. My guard motioned me to a stop in a domed, circular widening of the hall. Disappeared down another long passageway to deliver my message. I didn't have to wait long for an answer. But it wasn't from the Sultan. It was a ruddy-faced white man who walked into my waiting room, flanked by two guards. Well, well, Captain Philip Carney to see Kamalul Hakayam III, Sultan of Basilan. That's right. Might I ask, Carney... Aren't you behind schedule? Who are you? Well, you might say I'm a sort of unofficial court advisor. These young rulers need guidance, you know. My name is Roy Pope. So? I'm glad you arrived, Carney. A very important man wants to meet you. Constantino. He's arriving tomorrow. Huh? I was looking forward to meeting him, too. Strangely enough, he feels a certain amount of uh, admiration for you. Because you've been so difficult to kill, I believe. You aren't surprised to find us here before you, 
And in possession of the most vital charts of all? Not in the slightest. Your men have waited for me before. I'm just wondering how you managed to knock off the old man. His death was due to natural causes. But actually, it would have made little difference. We had operatives in the Sultan's palace long before he died. His death merely made it simpler. Yeah. Well, don't think it's been a pleasure. Now, if you'll get one of your nice, happy bellboys to show me out, I'll leave. You. Go ahead, take him. What? What? You. What? What? You. What? What? The original Sultan hadn't wasted any time or expense when he'd built the cell they tossed me into. Both its ventilation and light was supplied by the quarter-inch crack at the bottom of the heavy door. I lay there and rationed my breaths for a black, immeasurable period of time. The first inkling I got of someone's approach was the break in the weak ray of light under the door as somebody's feet passed through it. I got to my feet with the idea of making a try against whoever it was. But the first thing I saw as the door opened was the cold shine of a knife blade. The guard behind it motioned me forward. You come. You speak English. I make you here. This thirsty knife. You come. You no fight. He no drink on you. I don't fight. I come behind. You walk. Where do we go? We go up a room. Sultan, he rule. You come. Sultan rule. Other white man come too. Other Tuan, he go. Sultan, he no rule. Come. Then only Sultan in upper room? No. Only Sultan, number one Sultana, number two Sultana. Also, many guards with Thursday night. You not talk, you go. The upper room was large, rich with rugs and draperies, furnished with the treasures of gold and silverware necessary to serve a Sultan with food and drink. Musicians to soothe his ears. And luxurious, low, feather-padded couches for the comfort of his body. On one of these lounged Kamalul Hakayam III, looking like an Arabian Nights-style man of distinction, with his sharply bearded chin and the jewels flashing from his turban and his languid fingers. He was as handsome as the setting into which he nestled. Two couches on either side of him held his sultanas. The one of lower rank was all beauty with a coloring that tinged from light tan to ivory. Number one was weasel-like and her receding chin quivered with impatience as she waited for her lord to greet me so she could open up. My guest, perhaps, finds it more pleasant in this portion of my palace? It was only at your request. Heed! The unworthy will bow before my lord. He is not good. Your answer... Captain? I only came here at your request. The pig has a forked tongue, my lord. The honored guest, Roy Pope, speaks that you and one Kuji Khan were enemies of my father and even now are enemies to his memory and to me, his son. He is not good. Did your father ever speak to you about Kuji Khan? The unworthy questions, my lord. No, my father spoke of little to me. Roy Pope spoke that you and Kucha Khan were greedy for that which my father possessed. He prophesied that you alone would come to Basilan to take it from this palace. And the pig came. Roy Pope spoke truth. <laughs> yes. I ask only one thing. The inferior one does not ask. He begs. He grovels before my lord. He shrivels like a weed before the burning eyes of my lord, my highest star. I... Uh, you are... Your face takes the color from a troubled sunset. Is not red the color of fear? Your request. Will it bring us pleasure? I beg for the good of all concerned that you send me back to my cell. Send him back, my lord, that I may order servants to wash the floor where he has stood. <laughs> Again. Now what? You no make loud talk. No make sound. You come. What's the honor this time? You no talk. You go. Not same way. 
This way. The distance was short in the new direction, but the result was heart-stopping. The ivory-colored number two sultana arose from a couch as I went in. She was smiling. She held out her right hand as she met me in the middle of the room. My name is Sanga, Captain. Come and sit down. Yeah, thanks. Captain, I was so proud of you in the upper room earlier this evening. I tried so well, wait hard. Wait a minute. I can't take this all at once. I'm lost. You're a little surprising. I'm sorry. I forget my effect on people who don't know me. I'll keep it brief. I was the adopted daughter of Kamalu Hakayam, the second. He bought me from my family when I was nine years old. And he was returning here from his pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. My education has been in British schools in the Orient. And finally, I spent the war period in a school in the United States. That brings me almost back to normal. So you sprung me out of my cell. How'd you handle it? I've learned it by holding the love of the servants. One can wield even greater power in the palace than the lineal ruler himself. This place needs more like you. All right, I'm here. Why? Captain Connie, I want you to help me. Me help you? That's great. Help you do what? Help my lord, the sultan. I like that cell better every time I'm out of... Oh, please listen to me. I know you have every right in the world to hate him for what he did to you. But believe me, it isn't his fault. He's weak, I'll admit, but... A little love and understanding would help him. I know it would. He's never had any, and he needs it. You sound more like a woman than a number two sultana worried about her sultan. I wasn't going to let myself... Because now I'll sound like a cat when I put the blame for everything on Latima. Was that her name? She's a greedy, grasping woman. She's a liar and a cheat. But she's shrewd. She feeds my lord's vanity and leads him around like a puppy. What a sucker. Why does he put up with her? He has no choice. For many years, she has connived to gain control of the palace. Hmm. She's the cause of everything. Even your trouble here. What do you mean? She has been paid money for a long time to spy on my stepfather, to read letters from Kucha Kang, to steal a very important chart that my stepfather was to give to What do you know about that chart? Uh, when my stepfather knew he was dying, he honored me by saying that I was the only person he could trust with the secret and his promise to Kucha Kang. That neither Latima nor Pope has the chart. Latima thinks she has, not knowing one chart from another. And realizing more and more the value she thinks is behind her chart, she has set a very high price upon it. I'm bad. So high, in fact, that Mr. Constantino himself is arriving tomorrow to bring the money. So don't you think we should settle all our problems tonight? So that I can show my lord what a horrible woman she is. Here. Here's the true chart. Yeah. Now, put it in your pocket where it will be safe. Sanka, it is the chart. I'm lost again. I, I don't know what to say to you or do. Phil, would this sound silly? Nothing would sound silly from you. What would you? But you're nice and you won't laugh at me. Ali, you may go. All right, sure. And now, with the guard gone, you and I are the only ones who will know if it is silly. Phil? The last time I was kissed was the night of June 16, 1945, on the Ferris wheel at Long Beach, California. There now. Is it silly? Silly. Look, let's not waste time denying anything now. That's what I wondered. Oh, Phil. Oh, Phil. Was it silly? Oh, gee. There's so many things I miss about the United States. But the likeness went out of the evening as suddenly as she'd brought it in. Two guns materialized, probably through love of the servants. And we started out to save the Sultan. Through her organization of the palace staff, our espionage was perfect. We received split-second reports on the movements of Pope, Latima, and the Sultan. 
I didn't know why it was so important until the three were reported together in the upper room and Sangha left me. She was back in 20 minutes, her soft eyes not so soft. Her soft mouth set a little grimly, and the tanned ivory skin over her cheekbones slightly flushed with excitement. Her grasp on my arm was spring tight as we walked through the long corridors. Her plans were well laid and successful until we entered the upper room. Latima and the Sultan wore pleased expressions, and Pope swung his automatic toward me in more than a threatening movement. I pushed Sanga sideways and hit the floor. Two slugs took a base just above me. No, no, Mr. Pope, no. You see, Sanga, we were warned of your visit by the few servants who aren't working with you. But I've come to help you. Really, you must believe me. Captain Carney has a true chart hidden. She lies. What's this, Sanga? It's true. I can prove it to you, Mr. Pope. The chart you bargained for is false. I can prove it. She lies. My lord, send her away. Yes, you enter my presence. Without, without never him. mind, Sultan. Yep. All right, Sangha. Carney, leave your gun on the floor and get up. Yeah. You too, Sangha. You can drop your gun. Certainly. I have no need of a gun if you will listen to me. There's only one thing I want. I want to prove to my lord and to you... Latima is a liar and a deceiver. Liar? Sanga, you dare... My lord, send her from here. You accuse the first sultana. I don't care about any family squabbles. Stay on your couch, Sultan. I'll handle this. All right, Sanga. What's this talk about the chart? Latima has been lying to my lord. And she's been trying to deceive you by selling you a false chart. She lies. My lord, do not believe. My lord would not know who lies. But Mr. Pope would. Here. It was hidden in her room. The chart she had ready for sale to Mr. Constantino tomorrow. Some islands in the Banda Sea, thousands of miles south. That shot is true. Look at it, Mr. Pope. Huh. Well, Mr. Pope? Is this the one we were paying 10,000 pesos for tomorrow? It is the one. It is the one that came from Coochie King. Carney, this is your party, Pope. All right, Sanga. I've had enough of this. Where is the true chart? Latima has already sold it to Captain Carney. Latima! She lies. I sold no chart to the pig. Captain Carney, give me the chart. Mm-hmm. There. There is a Celebes chart. Never mind the gun, Latima. Latima! You believe her, then my lord will believe her. Pope made his first mistake in arming his royal accomplice. The second was in shouting at her. Latima made a first rush at him, cocking the weapon with clumsy fingers. He didn't wait for her to make it. His two slugs jolted Latima backwards and knocked her to the floor. I understood Sanga's stand when she threw herself to her knees and scooped up her gun as I faded the other way after mine, but Pope was in action. <laughs> I didn't see her go down. I fell flat on my gun, grabbed it, and rolled into a new position. I came up against the table and turned, but I didn't have to fire. Sangha had raised herself partway up with her left arm, and her wavering gun muzzle was still following Pope as he settled silently to the floor. She sank back held up a reaching, hopeful hand as I bent over her. Things went all wrong. Yeah, they got a little mixed up, didn't they? I hated to act the way I did. I had to. Sure you did. It's all right. The chart, Phil, is here. Yeah. Now settle back, will you? My lord. He's not hurt? No, he's all right. You thought I was foolish. I love him, didn't you, Phil? But I proved it, didn't I? Sure, Sangha. You proved it. I wanted to give him love. And warm. And a son who will be a sultan. And no lies. Oh, Phil. It's all right, darling. No, it isn't. No. My lord. Oh, Phil. Please, Sanga. It's all right. No. Please, Sanga. No, Phil. She is dead now? Yeah. 
And she wanted to live. I hope you know why. My wish was that one of them would not die. Which one, Sultan? Well, that is no problem now, since both of them are dead. <laughs> now, in spite of my wishes, I find myself lonely. Is that all, Sultan? Well, it is a great burden. It is no small task to find wives. I will be lonely. So help me, Sultan, I gotta let go. It won't do her any good. Nothing will do you any good. But maybe it'll help me just a little bit. Now, come on, oh, get up off that couch. Strike this Sultan, you thing, but... You're lonesome, huh? off our stern and I brought the log up to date and put my signature under a day that I'd pay five of my own years to buy and bring back so that I could work out a better finish for it. But the new day brought us wind and we cut the motor to use it. Stand by to make sail! The crewmen, squinting with sleepy eyes against the rising sun, stood at their stations in the sad postures of the newly awakened and looked vacantly at Put Red. The mainsail awakened at the touch of the wind. The jibs flew up. Then the mizzen spread its expanse off my right shoulder. The Scarlet Queen bowed to the morning in her finest manner, flirted half-heartedly with a native lugger that flopped past us bound for Baselan, and then settled into her run across the Celebes Sea. Are we in a big hurry, Skipper, or is this all right? No, this'll do, Red. Your spirit still in the bilge, Skipper? Yeah, that's the truth, Red. Good way to go nuts, but I keep wanting that day back. I have been looking at the chart. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't want you to think I'm acting funny about this, but there's a blood stain on it. You think it could be hers? Couldn't be anyone else's, Red. Why? Well, it's not much of a chart for size, so I don't suppose it's much of a coincidence, but the stain covers the X that Kang marked the position of the prize with. Maybe she'll give us a hand, Red. Yeah. Well, I guess we don't have to talk about it. Drink, Skipper? Yeah. After you, mate. After you. Log entry. The Catch Scarlet Queen, 5.30 p.m. Miles traveled from San Francisco, 20,858. Wind brisk and rising, sky overcast. Mainsail and mizzen reefed. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney, Master. will invite you to sail into further adventure on the voyage of the Scarlet Queen next week at the same time. 